Hi everyone, welcome back to the another video of ENS Academy. So guys, in our previous videos, we have been learning about the pumps. We have seen the centrifugal pump, reciprocating pump. We have also learned about the gear pump. So guys, over here in today's video, we are going to learn about the double acting reciprocating pump. Well, in our previous video, we have seen the reciprocating pump that was the single acting reciprocating pump. The main problem in single acting reciprocating pump is that at the discharge side, we are not getting the continuous discharge. Like we will be getting the output in the uh, like a pulsed flow that is a intermittent flow that we were getting in a case of reciprocating pump but over here in case of the double acting reciprocating pump that problem has been resolved and we will be getting a smooth flow or else the this that's, that particular continuous flow or else uh, that particular intermittent flow it's uh, the frequency of that intermittent flow is reduced over here in double acting reciprocating pump so guys over here in today's video we are going to learn about the construction working of the double acting reciprocating pump so guys before going to our today's topic i request you to consider subscribing to my educational channel engineers academy and basically that is also free of cost and please press the bell icon so whenever i upload a new educational informative video you will get instant notification so guys, without wasting any time, let's begin with our today's topic that is nothing but the working of the double acting reciprocating pump. So guys, over here you can see this is the representation of the single acting reciprocating pump. We have learned the, its uh, construction, working and the different components of the single acting reciprocating pump. If you haven't watched my video, you can click over here on the top right corner. So now over here, this single acting reciprocating pump consists of a cylinder piston assembly over here this particular piston is connected to the piston rod and that particular piston rod is further connected to connecting rod the connecting rod is connected to the crank and the crank is completely driven by the electric motor so over here this is nothing but the representation of the single acting reciprocating pump this type of the single acting reciprocating pump will be having two walls at the one side and this is suction valve and the discharge valve the liquid will enter from the suction valve liquid gets compressed and the liquid gets delivered uh, with a higher pressure but over here the output we are getting is not a continuous output just like in the case of the centrifugal pump in case of the centrifugal pump we will be getting the continuous discharge but over here in the case of the reciprocating pump uh, we will be getting the intermittent flow the intermittent discharge we will be getting but over here the one advantage is that we will be getting the higher pressure but the flow is intermittent so to overcome that particular problem this particular uh, like the cylinder piston is slightly gets modified in order to reduce the intermittent flow in order to improve the discharge so over here the two inlet valves and the two discharge valves get introduced in a double acting reciprocating type pump so guys over here this is nothing but the representation of the double acting reciprocating pump over here they have implemented the two suction valves and the two discharge valves and the piston is being fitted at the center this particular piston is like reciprocates between these two valves and the rotary moment of the crank gets converted into the reciprocating moment over here and as the piston reciprocates let's say the scenario one the piston is being moved towards the uh, left side piston is moving towards the left side so as the piston moves towards the left side the suction is created at the back side of the piston and that particular wall that is the inlet wall at the back side of the piston gets open the liquid is being entered into the cylinder and at the same time the liquid which is there at the left side of the piston that particular liquid gets pressurized and the delivery valve at the left side gets open and the liquid gets discharged through that particular delivery wall through that particular discharge wall at the left side whereas on the right side of the piston the suction will occur and at the same time the left side of the piston the discharge will occur and when the piston moved towards the right side the same movement will occur so over here guys when the piston moves towards the right side the right side the fluid is present at the right side will get compressed and at the left side the suction will occur so guys over here this cycle gets repeated as the piston is being reciprocated into the cylinder so guys over here we will be getting a continuous discharge we have 
like reduced the frequency of the pulses that we were getting in the single acting reciprocating pump so this is nothing but the overall working of the double acting reciprocating pump guys over here we have uh, like we have reduced the intermittent flow also we will be getting the continuous flow in case of the double acting but the problem of the double acting reciprocating pump it cannot produce the higher pressure as that of the re single acting reciprocating pump in case of the single acting reciprocating pump we will be able to produce is, will be able to produce the higher pressure up to 250 bar but over here in case of the double acting reciprocating pump we cannot be able to produce that much of higher pressure however the discharge is however the discharge per minute has been increased over here in double acting reciprocating pump well now let's talk about the like the some kind of the problems in this double acting reciprocating pump so well over here in case of the double acting reciprocating pump the piston is the only dividing media between the two sides of the liquid so liquid is being present at the left side and at the same time the at the from the right side the liquid will be also there so guys at a certain point and that particular certain point occurs like in a scenario in which the liquid is present on the both the sides of the piston so guys there is there might be a chances of the leakage over here which occurs in the case of double acting reciprocating pump and that particular leakage can be termed as the slip the slip occurs due to the like uh, the piston rings or the cylinder liners that is wear outs just uh, during uh, like uh, bec just because of the reciprocating moment of the piston after some time period after some time intervals like those piston rings and the liner rings and the, they just worn out and uh, the leakage will occur like the slip will occur over here if the slip in that particular reciprocating pump is less than 1% it means your pump is working absolutely fine it means there is no need of any further action required if the slip is between 1 to 5% then the overhauling of the pump is required basically so guys that is nothing but a small video regarding the double acting reciprocating pump i hope you understood the working of the double acting reciprocating pump and uh, some problem in the double acting reciprocating pump so guys thank you for watching this educational video i hope you like my video please do subscribe to my educational channel engineers academy thank you so much guys for watching this educational video